Right now, the number one movie playing in the Netflix library is called Johnny Football. And it's part of their Untold series, and it details the life and rise and fall of the highly acclaimed quarterback, Johnny Manziel. And it's got a psychology story to it. So I'm gonna talk about it after I've just watched it. But first, I wanna reintroduce myself. I'm Elliot Connie, and I'm a licensed psychotherapist. And here in the Therapist React series, I talk about current stories and how they impact our psychology and the, the psychology aspect within the story. I hope you enjoy this series. Please subscribe to my new YouTube channel if you do. And I wanna kinda of get into this. So I have a house in Texas, I live in Texas, and when Johnny Manziel was meteorically rising, I was very aware of it. It was, it was happening kinda of right around me. There was this moment where uh, he beat a team that Texas A&M should have never beaten. They beat Alabama. And at the time, Alabama was like the most prominent team in the, in the sport. And Johnny Manziel was the quarterback of Texas A&M when they beat him. And that kind of put him on the national map and won the Heisman. Uh, he played for two years at Texas A&M. And then he got drafted by the Cleveland Browns to go and play in the NFL. And he didn't even last two seasons and he was cut. Now, I remember people referring to him as a bust and in this documentary, somebody calls him a loser. But what's actually happening, and he mentioned this in the documentary, is he has been diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what bipolar disorder is how you can notice it and and why i think people deserve compassion more than they do our judgment we think about bipolar disorder in pop culture it's kind of like a series of mood swings like if you're happy one minute and sad another people will say like man you're being super bipolar or something like that i mean that's not even close to what bipolar actually is bipolar is the kind of vacillation between extreme mania when you have energy and oftentimes don't sleep for days and extreme depression, where you are sad, you don't know why, and you oftentimes don't get out of bed for days. So, so it's not just like I'm in a good mood, bad mood. It's literally like I am manic, which means I, I just have profound levels of energy and I'm really, really down. As a consequence of this, people who struggle with bipolar disorder and what they can be manic for stretches, sometimes weeks, months, even longer, they appear to be like the life of the party because they're not sleeping and they're usually charismatic and they're usually hiding and or running from things that cause them pain. You know, Johnny Manziel was known to, for being a partier and that's usually red flag, it's a sign. People just can't stop partying. They almost like chase this adrenaline and there are people who when you start doing therapy with them and they start healing and resolving and dealing with and sometimes they take medicine, sometimes not, but when they start healing, they actually don't like it because no longer being manic feels like a bore. So these people will constantly chase a high, not a literal high in terms of drugs and alcohol, but sometimes that too, but they will, they will chase a high just in life. They often make bad decisions. Johnny Manziel talked about being an NFL quarterback and on Saturday afternoon, he flew to Las Vegas thinking he'd make it back in time for the game the next day, and he didn't. Literally missed the game. I mean, that is an unheard of thing in professional sports, and he literally missed the game going to Las Vegas. So people struggling with bipolar disorder typically make really, really bad decisions in a way that people don't understand. In this documentary, they talk about all the things they were doing to kind of keep Johnny Manziel on the straight and narrow so he wouldn't ruin his football career. And he couldn't understand why he kept doing these things. It looks like you're self-sabotaging. It looks like you're doing this on purpose. And he actually talked about people were saying that to him and he didn't understand it. But it's because these are like decisions you're making that come with extreme levels of negative consequences but you don't know it or, or experience it because you're you're living this life. And it's hard for me to watch this. At the time when it was happening, it looked like bipolar disorder to me as a psychotherapist. I mean, I was a, I'm was a fan of football, so when it was happening, my first thought was, oh, this is cool. Like, this quarterback is, like, taking over the world and playing amazing levels of football. But it didn't take me long to get concerned because then you can see the party lifestyle that he was leading in spite of severe consequences and you would hear talk show hosts talk about how much of a bust he was and how it's a waste and I mean really insane things but bipolar disorder 
it's an illness, it's a disease, it's like a real problem that affects people, it affects people forever, like for the rest of his life, more than likely. I mean, obviously he can get treatment and, and things like that, but this is gonna be something that he battles and struggles with the rest of his life. And I, and I think we should talk about it. I, I think that people should be more aware as a psychotherapist, I think I have a responsibility to kind of point these things out because you might have somebody in your family who struggles in a similar way and they might not be famous and well-known, but you'll see a similar pattern because uh, the pattern is often very, very similar. Now, Johnny Mazel had millions of dollars, and millions of fans, so it, it took on an extreme nature, but it's a similar pattern whether you're famous or not. So it was important to me to kind of highlight, this is really serious. He documented trying to end his life in the series and how that failed that is also not uncommon because eventually when you're that manic for that long you wake up and realize you've made mistakes that you can't unmake you realize there have been problems that that there's really no coming back from and that level of hopelessness leads to people taking their life so i actually enjoyed the documentary it was interesting kind of relive those things and like i said being in texas i was around a lot of that stuff but it's also sad to me to, to see someone struggling so publicly the documentary didn't end in a happy note like uh, there is no like happy ending at the moment like it's not like he went through all this and now he's on the other side like he's clearly still struggling with the symptoms of bipolar disorder and i hope uh, johnny Manziel gets help i hope that johnny Manziel can live his life in an, as normal a fashion as possible and if you know anybody in your life that's demonstrating these patterns i hope that you can encourage them to get help and and be the better version of themselves because this is a really hard uh, difficult thing so we need to be kinder to people I, like I've said this on my channel so many times and in fact that's kind of like the common theme of this channel in my work is I think we need to be kinder more compassionate give each other more grace uh, Johnny Manziel did some really really stupid things and made some really really stupid mistakes as a consequence he's living with the impact of those mistakes but those things are not done in, in free will it's a consequence of a disease so it's a cool documentary i encourage you guys to go watch it but be aware you're watching the unfolding of bipolar disorder and how it impacts people and um, i think people need more kindness and grace so thanks for watching please leave a comment below i would love to hear what you thought of this video and what you thought of the johnny football documentary that is on netflix so like this video share this video subscribe to my youtube channel follow me on social media and i'll see you in the next video